Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x, welcome back to Let's Play Phantom Hourglass. In the last episode, we took on the ghost ship, but Tetra has been turned to stone, and we have to go ahead and save her by talking to Zao's the blacksmith. But on the way, uh, or well, rather I started the video, I was, for some reason, by Mercy Island, and uh, Beetle was nearby, I thought I'd check him out, and while he doesn't have anything really cool, uh, oh, we get, it's five times the points for each purchase. Oh man, we can actually get, like... Bonus purchases, I guess. So if we did like this, we'd get like five times the, the points, I guess. Um, there's a horn chimney. I have no idea what it's, it's part of, but whatever, it's different. Also, the, the reason I want to show this off is he's actually selling the real ring in the stores, which uh, is interesting. It's 1890 rupees. He'll sell for 1500, so I could buy it technically, waste 350 or 390 rubies basically. But uh, it'll give me a ton of points towards my membership as well, though. So almost kind of tempting because. Like, if I exit out of this, I get how many points now? Because, like, that was just, like, a 100 rupee purchase. And I have no idea how much I had before, but... It's incredibly tempting to just buy that ring. And then spend it, and then, like, get five times the points. And during all the points. And then I'd only be spending 350, 90 rupees, and I'd be getting member... You know, what the hell? Let's do it. I'm wasting 390 rupees, but the amount of points I'm gonna get is gonna be kind of ridiculous. And I kind of approve of this. Because I now have 125 points. I went from silver to platinum. Okay. Ooh, the Regal VIP membership. Uh, do I have like any information as to how much I need to get that? That, that okay. Yeah, that was probably worthwhile. Yeah, I have, nope, I, I just, nope, I, nope, nope, nope. I don't know what my life is anymore. So, I'll, when, I, when I go to Mercy Island, which I'm going to have to soon anyway, uh, I will sell that Regal Ring for 1,500 rupees and make back most of what I just spent, and... Basically, the rewards I just got from Beetle, from the fact that I now have 30% off of everything, is actually kind of worth it, so... I think, in my opinion, it's worth it, so... Really, I don't know what my life is, but let's go to Zao's Island. Really tempted to do some fishing, but the fish is kind of heading the opposite direction, so I'm not going to worry about it for now, uh... Someday I'll just sit down and do the fishing if I have to, and I'm not sure if it gets easier to get the better fish in later seas anyway. So we'll see how that goes, but I've now gone from having a silver membership to a platinum membership. Yeah, so in about a week, so about a couple of videos from now probably, um, we will have the reward from that and it will be quite legendary. So special delivery, watch out, he's, he is incoming, and uh... A letter from Beetle. This should be the silver membership award, unfortunately, not the platinum one. So, uh, silver membership notice. Continue your stores. Yay, puts us at 20. I actually wonder if I'm going to get the gold membership now, though. That's the thing I'm wondering. But we also get our freebie cards, so next time there's like a golden ship part or something in there, um, we can go ahead and, or just something that sells for 1,500 rupees, we could use the freebie card and thus either make 1,500 rupees or get a golden ship part for, for free. So, that's handy to have. I really hope I'm not going to miss out on, like, the gold reward or something because I did that. That would kind of be unfortunate if I just skip you from gold, like, silver to platinum. You miss out on the reward for gold. But that was too hilarious anyway, so what the heck. I'm going to double check before I save this video, at the end of this video, though, to make sure that, uh, that's not a thing. But Zao's knows Grandpa. Uh, he knows he's the Ocean King, etc., etc. This Zao's guy, he knows a lot of things and epic battles and epic weapons and that we need an artifact called the phantom sword in order to defeat Bellum. So we need the, uh, to find this phantom sword. Luckily we know a blacksmith that can uh, know the location of the sword and or have it and or make it and or something. But of course it's not going to be that easy so yeah can we have your sword? That sounds kind of awkward to phrase it like that but of course he doesn't have it anymore. And Celia is just <laughs> this conversation is like he's just like I don't have it. So he's just like what? Nope. Don't have it. But, uh, yeah, so just, this is just a weird conversation because, like, he just kind of goes back and forth with kind of not telling us the information, but kind of telling us the information. So, okay, we can make it. Go make us a, a thing. And he's like, I can't do that either. And Celia's just like, what the heck is going on here? And it's just a strange conversation, and I kind of like it. And Zaus is just a weird, like, he's so, he doesn't have much of a personality, but, like, it's he's still just a weird character, in my opinion. I like him. I don't know, he's kind of sassy. But anyway, basically we need to get um, three metals in order to forge this 
Phantom Sword and bring him to him. So, guess what, guys? Three more MacGuffins. That means three more dungeons. Um, so these medals will be the three tribes of the world. However, we've only really seen humans before, so how is this going to work? We, well, the answer is, uh, as Celia points out, where it's just to go. We haven't really met any sort of tribe. We wouldn't know anyone who would have a medal. That's because there's two more scene charts to get, and uh, we need to get deeper into the Temple of the Ocean King to do that. But I thought we reached the bottom of the Temple of the Ocean King. Well, that's not quite true. There was a door with a symbol, remember? We tried to draw that hourglass. If we draw a Triforce instead, we can uh, head it deeper into the temple. So let's go ahead and make a note of this symbol, and we can... Uh, well, we don't really need to make a note of it, but we will anyway. So as you can see, it tells you the first line is to go like this, and essentially you want to like do something like this, which that was a really crappy drawing of the Triforce, but you can see how like you can see how it's supposed to be drawn like that, but not necessarily if a giant chunk missing out the right side of that triangle. But that's okay. I'm not an artist. We have more mail. This is just getting out of hand here, Mr. Postman. A letter for. Oh wait, am I gonna get the gold membership thing too? Am I going to get all the memberships, like, right now? Gold membership notice. Hi, it's Beetle again. We now have 50. We can get to gold membership. So, we get a compliment card. What does that do, then? A uh, compliment card. Apparently, we have to take it to Beetle in order to use it. Well, now I'm almost kind of tempted to do that. And the mailman will just never cease. Just never. The mail, the mail is forever. All right, so... Yeah, we gotta get us. So I guess I'm kind of skipping through this text really fast. That was kind of new text, and I kind of oh well. Uh, basically, what that's trying to—he's just like, oh man, we gotta get more MacGuffins again. Oh darn. Yeah, I wasn't really reading that text. I was—I was expecting it to be the usual like, oh let's get on the boat text, and it wasn't. Oops. So let's head to. Uh, we have ourselves a Temple of the Ocean King to explore again. Which, in the rest of this episode, the way, the way I'm going to do this one, I think, is I'm going to get us to where we were at the Temple of the Ocean King, and then we'll do the new stuff in the next episode, and then I'll do some side stuff afterwards as well. Also, Beetle's nowhere to be found, so I guess we'll figure out what happens to the compliment card probably next episode. Because right now, I have no idea. Just no idea at all. But apparently, we got to go straight to gold, but we, got, we did get the gold membership reward after all. I'm not sure what the Platinum reward is. I'm not sure if there's a hurt container in this game associated with Beetle. I know there was one in Spirit Tracks, but I don't know if there's one in this game. So, I don't know if we're gonna get, like, some kind of interesting reward for Platinum, but... Either way, it was kind of worth it. Mailman! Seriously, you're just everywhere! Come on, Mr. Guy. Although, okay, well, here we go, Platinum membership. We're just getting all of the, the letters for Beetle. I guess, I guess it didn't take a week after all. So, yay! Wowie wow wow! Oh, we got. We got another. Uh, wait. So, we got another complimentary card. So, we have two complimentary cards. What? So, are these all. Are these different cards? I'm so confused right now. Yep. I guess we would have gotten a, a second freebie card, but because I haven't used this first freebie card. Basically, I've just kind of broken this game, I think, at this point. I mean, I'm not too concerned about having another. Losing a freebie card or something. Do I have? I guess there's something I can quickly equip with this. Why the heck not? Um, because I have these I can equip onto here, and these are pillar ones. And now because of this, I can still I can get away with doing this, and it'll be good. And also, I'm kind of really curious about this chimney and what set this is from. And it's from a set that's way down there, and I don't even care. But whatever. I had five extra points, and now I have equip my golden part. And if I get any other golden part that isn't one of those three, Jesus Christ, Postman! What are you doing? Welcome to Postman, the episode where everything's made up and the Postmans don't matter. I don't know why I keep referencing whose line, but it's just kind of a thing. Um, so this is from Jolene. It's actually something different and unique. Um, so. They're basically talking about, you know, oh, the hobby's the same. They're obsessed with dressing up in costumes. She prefers her pirate clothes, etc., etc. This is just the episode where I'm skipping through the text way too fast, by the way. I'm kind of, I kind of just want to get through this and get to the actual part of the... Ooh. Ooh. That's a cool-looking cannon. I am okay with this. That, that seems like that could potentially be part of the stone set, by the way. 
actually. So, maybe I'll just get an entirely stone set chip. I don't know. If I get one more stone set, I can actually get another extra heart. So while we're here, this regal ring, let's go ahead and sell it because I don't need it anymore. I only really bought it so that I could uh, get the, <laughs> the golden ship part there. So yeah, I'll sell it. No big deal. And I guess I could sell it. I have like, how much is this worth again? This is like 200? 150? Cool. Let's just get us back over 2,000 for all I care. Just in case for some reason I ever come across a golden ship part in the future. Although now I have a freebie card, so it doesn't really matter. I just... I just skipped a platinum, guys, in like a sec- I didn't even know that was possible. Also, the mailman still has another thing to send, so let's just sit here and listen to his spiel again, because this is just- it's a letter from Lineback. Okay, that's unexpected. What do you have to tell me today, Mr. Postman? Why- yeah, why are you doing- well, it's because he's, he, he's gonna do something very non lineback -y ish He's- he's right because we're thankful. He's, a. Uh, this is, is kind of awkward. You could have just said to our face. <laughs> You're not very good at this compliment thing, you know? But he does give us a gift that we already have. Way to go, Lineback. You completely wasted our time. All right. Well, thanks for that, sir. That was, that was very touching. I guess I'm going to go ahead and put the new cannon on. And then, uh, just to see if there's one, any more mail at this point. Because... This has just gotten extremely out of hand. But yep, this is part of the, the stone set. So if I get one more stone piece, I can, I can re-equip the wheels and I can then get another uh, a heart. So I'm actually extremely close now to getting six hearts, just thanks to getting everything stone. Ho there, small fry, why are you here? Thank you for that. Can I just get to the plot, please? Yes, I've heard about the Chief of the Frogs. It's very exciting. No, I haven't heard about the Chief of the Frogs. What do you have to say? So once again, the game is like, the game pretty much forces, hey, you could go ride the wind on an island over here. If you go to that island, you can get a thing. And they've shoved it. That's like the third or fourth time they've literally shoved that down our throat. Like, you literally can't pass this area without a guy yelling at you to go talk to him about it. I mean, I understand, like, yeah, giving, like, hints to secrets, but this is just blatantly, like, do the secret, or I will be angry, Shakes Fist, at you. And it's just like, okay, why, why you gotta do this? Oh man, it's a massive earthquake here. So, uh, it's coming from the temple, deep beneath the temple. That's where Bellum is. So eventually we'll have to go to the bottom of the temple of the Ocean King. But uh, for now we can only make yet another little chunk through the next few floors before we, uh, progress on so let's go ahead and get ourselves a new seed chart the temple of the ocean king awaits us but what's inside it well let's find out we now have 16 minutes which seems like a lot of time but this game starts getting a bit tougher if you get hit by fandoms too much you're gonna actually lose a lot of that time so be careful um, and also speaking of phantoms we now have a slightly difficult, more, slightly difficulter, no, a slightly more difficult task here with red phantoms instead of blue. These red ones are actually going to be, uh, they're more powerful, and in fact, they're a swift phantom. They're much faster than other phantoms, so basically if they catch us, we're going to have to really run a lot faster, so we're going to have to be extra careful and sneaky. Also, there's, there's an eye thing we can shoot here, but if you don't fall off a cliff, you'll, uh, you'll discover that, but... Anyway, gonna quickly just alert this guy just to show, holy crap, he is fast. He is extremely fast. Massively fast. Also, a fun little task though is the fact that since we have the fire sword now, we can actually uh, stun the phantoms. I'm actually curious, is there anything like up here for the, no, okay. I wasn't sure if there's anything up here for the bow, so I wanted to quickly check, but let's not waste too much time. Basically the point is we can now essentially, oh, I don't need to turn that torch on, I need to hit the switch over here. I don't care about your beeping. Doesn't matter, I have bombs, I can skip through this. The point is though, the swift phantoms are really fast, so be careful about this. Hit the switch, get the key, move on to the next floor, we've seen this floor before. I've demonstrated, I've demonstrated the swift phantoms. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to. I apologize. So yeah, watch out for the swift phantoms, they are quick. Luckily for us, like I said, our sword can now stun them, which is really nice. Uh, only the upgraded sword can actually do that, as far as I'm aware. So, uh... 
Also, our bow can stun them just like the Reaper Lanes, so we now have options to actually fight the Phantoms. Doesn't make our life too much easier, but it makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna wait for this guy to turn over this way, and stab him in the back, pull the switch. I was actually gonna use the bow, but apparently Link was like, nope, you're going to stab him instead. Congratulations. So instead of alerting the Phantom like we usually do, we can just kind of stun him now. Get the key to drop, open that thing up, bomb this wall, grab the key, into the door. So, like I said, we now have uh, even more ways to really sort of skip past these earlier floors, which is nice because you're going to want to save as much time as possible with these earlier floors. You don't want to be wasting too much of it. So, get the key. Hopefully don't get spotted, and we didn't. I wasn't too sure if that was going to be a thing. We can quickly go ahead and bomb this wall in order to go ahead and uh, get an extra little bit of time, because there is, if you remember correctly, a extra 30 seconds back here, so I will grab that, and we will now be at, at 15 minutes, which is always nice. We will open this door, and from there, we will uh, head deeper into the temple. So, as you can see, we're now on this floor, which is the more annoying of the floors right now, because we're going to have to actually uh, get the three thingamajiggers again, as usual, and this time the swift phantoms. And I think, I'm not sure if the normal phantoms do this, but the swift phantoms, if you drop a force gem in front of them, they will actually grab it, which is something I will try to demonstrate at some point here. Um, not necessarily right now, because I want to get in a decent spot here, but at some point I want to demonstrate that they will actually pick up things on the ground, such as the Force Gems, any keys that are lying around the ground, etc, etc. Anything important, the, the Phantoms will actually pick up and force you to have to basically stun them, or attack them in some way to get it. So you want to be careful of leaving stuff around the map if the Phantoms find it. You're just going to be in even more trouble than before, so... Generally not the best situation. There's a thing here, by the way, we can shoot the bow. We will actually be taking care of that, because there's a few things, actually, now that we have a bow, that we can just get in terms of extra treasures, which is nice as well. So, you are just going to be another force gem, aren't you? Yeah. Cool story. Don't really care. I'm going to leave this force gem here for now. We're going to open this thing up, and uh, I'm going to quickly get the reward from this thing right here. Which I don't think the... Yeah, the Phantom's not going to pick up that one, just because... It's oh shoot! This is a this is a time trial thing. Let's don't see see me. Thank you. If I had see if he had seen me, there was be no way I was gonna catch this time trial. But we get ourselves another power gem for that. We're now at eleven power gems. Kind of this seems a bit unnecessary, but we we'll go ahead and wait for this phantom to walk by here and uh, sneak attack. Boom! It's so much fun to be able to stun them now. So we can grab ourselves the key here and uh, we can go get this force gem down here and bring it to where it needs to go. As far as I'm aware, I don't think there's any other area in here that we need to shoot with our bow. So I think we can just go ahead and get the... There we go. There's a poor force gem throw there. Very poor. Very poor. But we can go ahead and quickly grab this last one up here. Don't see me. Thank you. And... Oh, this one's gonna be... No, he's... Okay, he's turning that way. We're gonna be good to go. Grab this key and so far so far some pretty good progress we're only at 14 minutes and 30 seconds which is actually kind of nice uh gotta quickly go ahead and just get out of my go out of my way a little bit here just to demonstrate that the, uh, the phantoms will pick up the force gems just for the sake of demonstration purposes you can just kind of assume that i didn't mean to you to see me here you can have it take my offering you know you want it it's a force gem so, as you can see, he turns it, he grabs it, and he now has it. So, we have to strike him to get him to drop it and go from there. So, any sort of key, any sort of force gem, um, there's going to be a mechanic in the second half of this uh, temple of the new stuff that uh, will also be stuff that the Phantoms can pick up. So, be careful with what you're doing of those. You don't want to be accidentally losing these... Uh... You don't want to be basically giving them you know, items and having to waste time hunting them down, risking, you know, getting attacked. These swift phantoms are fairly scary. They go pretty fast. It's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to evade them. So, extra 30 seconds here on the clock. We're, uh, we're only a minute and 30 technically in with our, our timer, which is actually pretty good. And uh, we will take on the next batch of floors, which is going to be a lot easier now because the bow will speed us through a lot. This, hit that, all the wind is gone, which makes your life so much easier. All we need to do now is... Avoid that thing, ideally, because now we're going to get another phantom to spawn here, which is a little awkward. I'll let him go ahead and do the 
Yeah, there we go. Do that. Kill it. Hide. And the nice thing is it gathers the two of these together so we can actually kind of try to stab both of them here. Stun them both, which will be nice. And I can... Yeah, well, as long as they're stunned, they're not going to be coming after me in the first place, so I can kind of just wait this out. Anyway, the wait... Nope! You don't see me! I'm not here! You didn't notice a thing! Okay, cool. So that actually gives me an opportunity to bomb this area here. Uh, I've been noticed. Alright. Let's just kind of run away. Kind of just juke them out here. And we can hit the switch here. This stuff we get... Or, well, shoot, I just spoiled what it is, but... Basically, this whole thing... No one heard what I just said. But, uh... Basically, it's a weapon we're gonna get soon that we can't really do anything with here. Uh, just for funsies, let's go ahead and just... I'm not sure if it, if it drops in the treasure chest if I hit all three of them. No. So that was just the one time only thing. Cool. Okay. So we get the key here, move on to the next floor, so on and so forth. Life is good. So what do you have to sell here, Mr. Skeleton? Do you have anything new? Um, basically it tells us we can hit the phantoms with the bow from behind and it will have an effect. So we can stun the phantoms, basically. Good to know. Good to know. Now this key is actually important. Keep in mind uh, that we had to use a key here. It's actually be uh, an interesting hint for the next one because as you can see, there's a second way to get down to this floor, as we know, um, that but we don't have the means to do yet. That will actually come into play at some point, but not quite for now. Uh, so this will get rid of the two spike things instead of having to do it the long way, even though it's not really that long of a way. We'll build it in 30 seconds pretty easily and move forward to this area where I have to fight things again. So, same old, same old. This time we have Flaming Skulls. Luckily our Flaming Sword will kill them in one hit and make them relatively easy to kill. The Flaming Sword is going to make just quick work of any sort of trash enemy, which is nice in a area like this where you're actually timed. So we can uh, go a little bit faster, and that's always good. So we'll go ahead, grab the extra 15 seconds here, waste about 15 seconds to get it in the first place, but that's okay, because we'll have another group of enemies to fight here. And these ones are these guys. So as you can see, the enemies actually get tougher as the more times you go through the, the temple. They actually will get tougher later on. Alright, you stop. I need to poke your butt. Thank you. A lot easier to kill when you have a sword made of fire. That's for sure. That was a... Uh, that made some quick work with them. And another extra 15 seconds coming up here. And then we'll be on the floor there, ready to take on the next part. So, uh... Unfortunately, we well, we can shoot this actually, it's over here. And it does actually drop it in the treasure chest, this one's not going to have a potion, instead it's going to have 100 rupees, so that's not terrible. A little bit of extra money, a little bit of extra funds, we still can't get this big treasure over here until uh, we're able to access that part of the floor, which means we can skip getting a key, which means we can have a key and not use it by the way. Keep that in mind, that is actually fairly important. So we're at the crested door, we have to draw the symbol that Zhao showed us and we'll be able to progress further. So, hi guy, you're a guy. Hi eye, you're an eye. Hi treasure, you're a treasure. I see that thing there. Gonna just snipe it with my bow from off screen, from downtown. And we'll actually get ourselves a treasure map. So uh, another treasure map. We actually will go ahead and grab the treasure map after we go to the Temple of the Ocean King next episode. So that'll be a thing that we do. But otherwise, as far as I'm aware, all we need to do is just head to the door here. Because we don't really need to bother killing the things, there's no real reason to to kill the eyes, just give, give us an extra bit, a little bit of time. Which, by the time we get over there to get the time, it doesn't even matter in the first place. So, let's draw a Triforce. Uh, just gotta do one of these things. That should be an adequately good Triforce there. There we go! Das, das a beautiful Triforce there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anyway. With this, we can uh, head in here. And we're in a different room than the one from last time. Um, so it's taking us to a different place with a floor that we can go downstairs on. The Crest of Courage awaits us here. So uh, we can go ahead and talk to this guy instead, apparently. Hi, Mr. Skeleton. So uh, here's actually an interesting thing about the temple is once you get to this point in the map, you get a yellow teleport. This is a bit different from the blue teleport. Uh, the way this one works is basically um, a midway point. It saves the journey time, lets us go to the entrance, we can leave the temple, we can do whatever we want, the yellow light will return, and uh, basically it's there permanently as far as I'm aware until you, uh, unless you do a, a trip from the beginning of the temple and come back here. So essentially we have a midway point. From now on we can start the dungeon here. 
We're not necessarily going to do that because there's treasures we can still get along the way with uh, the new items we get, but it's a neat feature. It'll save us some time if we, and it also lets us leave if for some reason we needed to do anything, so, which we don't, but, uh, can I actually from here hit the things over here? Sweet. That's kind of cool. So yeah, we can head here. It's basically essentially a midway point. It, takes, it took us 2 minutes and 47 seconds to reach the room, as you can see. 16 minus 247 equals 1313. Even if you upgrade your stand-up hours, I think it'll only take out that much time then. So, uh, hey, what's up, skeleton? Yeah, I've, I've been around. Yeah, I, I was, I'm totally prepared. Okay. Do you, do you have secrets for me to... Oh, okay, he has secrets for us to do. Secrets for the phantoms. Yeah, okay, we already knew that. Someone told us that for free, you know. You're... You're not very, uh... Do you have any other... Yeah, you don't have any other secrets. Do you have secrets? You do have secrets, okay. Let's hear these secrets, okay. So yeah, it doesn't... Oh yeah, the red, the, the red pots actually do reset when you go to the floors, so... The yellow ones don't, but the, uh... The other ones do. Do you have, do you have any wisdom, Mr. Guy? You do, okay. Oh, we have some shortcut ideas, too. Well, thanks! That was... Unhelpful. Rude. So as you can see, you can, come, you can leave the temple. You can come back in. And, uh... The midway point is still here. You can enter it, and it'll say, uh... Return to the sixth floor of two minutes and 50, 47 seconds. And indeed, we can do that. But that being said, guys, we will do this in the next episode. So this is Lucky70X signing out. In the next episode, the new part of the Temple of the Ocean King begins. Gonna be exciting! See you guys then. Bye-bye.